Hi learners! Welcome to Math is Fun with Sir O. Today, I will be discussing problem solving. So this is the part two of our lesson in which we're going to discuss problem solving heuristics and strategies. So before we go to our discussion, I'm going to read first our learning outcomes. First, become familiar of the problem solving heuristics and be able to identify the strategy most appropriate for the problem. Second, use problem solving strategies to investigate and understand mathematical content. Third, acquire skill in developing and applying a variety of strategies to solve problems. Fourth, verify and generalize results with respect to the original problem situation. And lastly, gain confidence in using mathematics meaningfully to solve problems. Will there be any question with regard to our learning outcomes? There's none. Problem solving heuristics. A heuristic method is an approach to finding a solution to a problem that originates from the ancient Greek word heurisco, meaning to find, search, or discover. It is about using a practical method that doesn't necessarily need to be perfect. In other words, when we say heuristic, it is enabling someone to discover or learn something for themselves. So our keywords there would be self-discovery or self-learning. George Polia. He is one of the foremost recent mathematicians to make a study of problem solving. He was born in Hungary and moved to the United States in 1940. The basic problem solving strategy that Polya advocated consisted of four steps. After a brief stay at Brown University, George Polya moved to Stanford University in 1942 and taught there until his retirement. While at Stanford, he published 10 books and a number of articles for mathematics journals. Of the books Polya published, How to Solve It in 1945 is one of his best known. In this book, Polya outlines a strategy for solving problems from virtually any discipline. A great discovery solves a great problem, but there is a grain of discovery in the solution of any problem. Your problem may be modest, but if it challenges your curiosity and brings into play your inventive faculties, and if you solve it by your own means, you may experience the tension and enjoy the triumph of discovery. So this is an excerpt taken from the book of Polya. This time, we're going to discuss Polya's problem-solving strategies. Basically, we have four steps of problem-solving strategy presented by Polya. The first one is understanding the problem. Second, devising a plan. Third, carry out the plan. And fourth, looking back. So we're going to discuss each of this strategy. First, understanding the problem. You must have a clear understanding of the problem. To help you focus on understanding the problem, you may consider the following questions. First, can you restate the problem in your own words? So we're going to have an example. Find three consecutive integers whose sum is 96. Now, can you restate this problem in your own words? Definitely, right? So you may say, three consecutive integers have a sum of 96. Let's go to the next question. Can you determine what is known about these types of problems? Identify what you are trying to find. So using the same example, we're going to find three consecutive integers. Next. Is there missing information that, if known, would allow you to solve the problem? If the first integer is known, then the second integer is 1 more than the first, and the third integer is 1 more than the second. 
So if we're talking about the three consecutive integers, we're looking for the three numbers in succession. For example, we have four, five, and six. It could be also six, seven, eight. Now let's go to the next question. Is there extraneous information that is not needed to solve the problem? Strip the problem of irrelevant details. So we have here an example. Rambo is a 35-pound dog. He eats a 5-pound bag of dog food that costs 150 pesos every week. How much does it cost to feed him for 4 weeks? So our problem has a lot of words. So in order for us to understand better, we're going to strip the irrelevant details of the problem. So the data 35 pounds is an extraneous information that is not needed to solve the problem. So meaning, without this detail, we can still solve our problem. Now let's go to the next one. Don't impose conditions that do not exist. Example, how can you divide eight balls in three baskets such that there is an odd number of balls in each basket? There is no condition or requirement that a basket could not be placed inside another basket. Hence, this action can be done to find a solution to this problem. Next question, what is the goal? So using the same example in our first question, find three consecutive integers whose sum is 96. So what is the goal of this problem? The goal is to find three consecutive integers. Now let's go to our next strategy, devising a plan. Successful problem solvers use a variety of techniques when they attempt to solve a problem. Below is a list of procedures that can be employed to solve a problem. So we can make a list of the known information, make a chart or a table, Draw a picture. Eliminate impossible situations. Look for a pattern. Try a simpler version of the problem. Guess, test, and revise. Work backward. Design a model. Develop a formula and write an equation. If necessary, define what each variable represents. Use an algorithm. Perform an experiment. Make a flowchart. And acting out the problem. So these are the ways on how we could be able to devise our plan in solving our problem. Now let's go to our third strategy. Carry out the plan. So once you have devised a plan, you must carry it out. You have to work carefully. This is to avoid any errors with regard to your mathematical expressions and symbols. Next, keep an accurate and neat record of all your attempts. This is to make comparisons of all the attempts you have undertaken and you can choose the best one. And lastly, realize that some of your initial plans will not work and that you may have to devise another plan or modify your existing plan. Review the solution once you have found a solution and check the solution. In mathematics, we have to be patient until we are able to reach the goal of the problem. Let's go to the fourth strategy, looking back, seeing if your solution makes sense. So we have to ensure that the solution is consistent with the facts of the problem. Interpret the solution in the context of the problem and ask yourself whether there are generalizations of the solution that could apply to other problems. So in order for us to better understand Polya's four problem solving strategies, then we're going to have some examples. Sample problem number one, the right fun toy store sells only wagons and bicycles. On a particular day, it sold 12 items with a total of 32 wheels. How many wagons and how many bicycles were sold that day? 
So first, let's go to understanding the problem. Perhaps we can visualize wagons and bicycles. The wagons each have four wheels and the bicycles have two wheels. A total of 12 items are sold on that day. Second, devising a plan. We can draw pictures of wagons and bicycles and count the number of wheels. This will take a while. Perhaps we can guess a number of wagons, then find the number of bicycles by subtracting. Then we can multiply the number of wagons by four wheels and the number of bicycles by two wheels and add together their products to find the total number of wheels. Now let's go to the third strategy, carrying out the plan. We make observations on our guesses, meaning the plan that we have devised earlier will be put on action. So we have here our list of our guesses. So we can have eight wagons times four wheels plus zero bicycle times two wheels. That would be a total of 32 wheels. We have to remember that the total number of wheels should be 32. That would be our goal. Now, the second guess, six wagons times four wheels plus six bicycles times two wheels, that is a total of 36 wheels. This is not what we are looking for. So, another guess, five wagons times... So, we proceed with another guess, five wagons times four wheels plus seven bicycles times two wheels, then it has a total of 34 wheels. And again, this is not what we are looking for. So we have our last and final guess. Four wagons times four wheels plus eight bicycles times two wheels, and that gives us a total of 32 wheels. So this is the number that we are looking for. Four wagons and eight bicycles satisfy the requirements of 32 wheels. And lastly, looking back, we make sure that four wagons and eight bicycles make a total of 12 items and together we get a total of 32 wheels. Thus, we are satisfied with the results. Let's go to sample problem number two. Consider the map shown in figure 1.2. Allison wishes to walk along the streets from point A to point B. How many routes or routes can Allison take? So, Allison will walk from point A to point B. So, we're going to find out how many direct routes can Allison take. Let's go to the first strategy, understanding the problem. We would not be able to answer the question if Allison retraced her path or traveled away from point B. Thus, we assume that on a direct route, she always travels along a street in a direction that gets her closer to point B. Let's go to number two strategy. Devise a plan. The map in figure 1.2 has many extraneous details. Thus, we make a simple diagram of the street. See the figure at the left. This diagram will allow us to concentrate on the essential information. Because there are many routes, we consider the similar but simpler diagrams shown below. The number at each street intersection represents the number of routes from point A to that particular intersection. So we have to look for patterns. It appears that the number of routes to an intersection is the sum of the number of routes of the adjacent intersection to its left and the number of its routes to the intersection directly above. Now let's go to the third strategy, carry out the plan. Using the pattern discovered above, we see from the figure at the left that the number of routes from point A to point B is 35. Now let's go to the last strategy, review the solution. Ask yourself whether the result of 35 seems reasonable. If you were required to draw each route, could you devise a scheme that would enable you to draw each route without missing a route or duplicating a route? All right. Okay, so now let's go to our sample problem number three. A baseball team won two out of their last four games. In how many different orders could they have two wins and two loses in four games? So first, understanding the problem. There are many different orders. The team may have won two straight games 
and lost the last two. Or maybe they lost the first two games and won the last two. Of course, there are other possibilities such as WL, WL, or win-lose, win-lose. Second, devise a plan. We will make an organized list of all the possible orders. An organized list is a list that is produced using a system that ensures that each of the different orders will be listed once and only once. Third, carry out the plan. Each entry in our list must contain two W's and two L's. We will use a strategy that makes sure each order is considered with no duplications. One such strategy is to always write a W unless doing so will produce too many W's or a duplicate of one of the previous orders. If it is not possible to write a W, then and only then do we write an L. So this strategy produces the six different orders shown below. So we have the first one. Start with two wins. So two W's and two L. Then start with one win. So we have win, lose, win, lose. Then we have your win, lose, lose, win. The number four, start with one loss. That would be loss, win, win, loss. Then we have loss, win, loss, win. And lastly, for number six, start with two loses. So loss, loss, win, win. Now, how do we know that we have produces the six different orders? So you can solve that using our combination concept. So you can use this formula. And CR is equal to, you have your N factorial in your numerator. And then we have your denominator, which is R factorial. And we have to multiply that with N minus R quantity factorial. All right. So now let's go to our last strategy, review the solution. So we have made an organized list. The list has no duplicates and the list considers all possibilities. So we are confident that there are six different orders in which a baseball team can win exactly two out of four games. Any question? None. Let's go to... Pascal's triangle. What exactly is Pascal's triangle? Pascal's triangle is a triangular arrangement of numbers that gives the coefficient is the expansion of any binomial expression. So the triangular pattern below is known as Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle has intrigued mathematicians for hundreds of years. Although it is named after the mathematician Blaise Pascal, there is evidence that it was first developed in China in the 1300s. Observe the manner by which the numbers are created. Write down your observations. So we have your symmetry of the numbers. Okay, so look at very carefully the symmetry of the numbers. If we're going to cut our triangle from here, then we will definitely have the symmetry of the numbers on the left and the right side. Then second, sum of the numbers in each row. So if we're going to submit the numbers in each row, then we're going to have 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, which means we are like doubling the number as we go along with each of the rows. The ancient Greek mathematicians were interested in the geometric shapes associated with numbers. For instance, they noticed the triangles can be constructed using 1, 3, 6, 10, or 15 dots, as shown below. So they call the numbers 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, the triangular numbers. So how do the triangular numbers appear in the Pascal's triangle? So if you're going to examine very carefully, we could be able to form triangles in our Pascal's triangle, such as these triangles here in our illustration. Now, how do the Fibonacci numbers appear in the Pascal's triangle? Now, can you see any Fibonacci number in there? All right. 
Okay, so maybe we have this number, 1, then followed by 1, then we have 2, then we have 3, then we have to skip that, we go to 5, right? And so on. Now let's go to Carl Frederick Gauss. He was a scientist and a mathematician. His work encompassed several disciplines, including number theory, analysis, astronomy, and optics. He is known for having shown mathematical prowess as early as age three. It is reported that soon after Gauss entered elementary school, his teacher assigned the problem of finding the sum of the first 100 natural numbers. Gauss was able to determine the sum in a matter of a few seconds. The following solution shows the thought process he used. Understanding the problem, the sum of the first 100 natural numbers is represented by 1 plus 2 plus 3. We have, your, we have our ellipses. Then we continue with 98, 99, and 100. Devise a plan. Adding the first 100 natural numbers from left to right would be time-consuming. Gauss considered another method. He added 1 and 100 to produce 101. He noticed that 2 and 99 have a sum of 101 and 3 and 98 have a sum of 101. Thus, the 100 numbers could be thought of as 50 pairs, each with a sum of 101. So we could be able to use this illustration. So 1 is paired out to 100 to get a total of 101. 2 is paired to 99 and it has the same total which is 101. 3 as well, paired to 98, has a total of 101. Carry out the plan. To find the sum of the 50 pairs, each with a sum of 101, Gauss computed 50,101 and arrived at 50,050 as the solution. And lastly, review the solution. Because the addends in an addition problem can be placed in any order without changing the sum, Gauss was confident that he had the correct solution. Any question for these examples? Check your progress. So this will be serving as your assignment for this lesson. I have prepared five problems for this lesson. So I hope that you could be able to show in your solution the four strategies presented by George Polia. So thank you so much for listening and watching this video. That would be all for today. So of course, I would always encourage you to please like and share this video to your friends and classmates. And please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel because I will be very glad and grateful to make more video lessons for you to make your math learning journey a wholesome and fun. So this time, I'm going to bid goodbye and always keep safe and God bless everyone. This is your Sir O saying Laban Lang.